and welcome. In this video tutorial, I'll show you some of the enhanced functionality associated with Maven 2, the newest version of the Maven open source mass spectrometry exploration and processing platform. You may follow along the steps with the associated R Markdown document, metabolomicsexampleanalysis.rmd. First, you must get Maven. You can receive, you can retrieve Maven by visiting this URL. And if you do that, you will find the latest release of Maven, which at the time of this video is version 2.0.0. However, as long as you search for this latest tag, if there is a more, if there is an update made, you will always, this will always direct you to the newest release. Depending on the operating system you're using, you'll need either the Windows, the Mac, or the Linux um, artifact. Simply click on the appropriate artifact to start the download onto your computer. Once you have installed Maven, now you're ready to begin. When you open Maven, you'll see a window something like this. A common place to start is by loading a number of samples. And in this case, Maven requires MZML or MZXML samples. If you're using uh, directly from the instrument, you'll often find that the files generated by the instrument uh, are encrypted and so cannot be read by Maven. But typically, uh, instrument software offers an option to export as MZML or MZXML. You can also use the open source program MS Convert, which is a part of Proteo Wizard. Here, we are loading files that were acquired using data-dependent acquisition, and we're, we're going to collect data that has both MS1 and MS2 scans. In this case, there are two groups of files, water samples and yeast samples, which are spiked in with known samples from the Sigma Metabolite Library. So to start loading files, samples, into Maven, you click Open. And here I'm going to navigate, and here it's already set. So let's just take a few. We're going to look at what I'm doing here is I'm holding down the Command key as I click. I can also hold down the Shift key to select a group. And here we're just going to load a couple of samples. You can follow progress down here and the sample is loaded. Now I want to point out that if you're using Maven you encounter a problem, you can always click this little bug button and it will take you to a page where you can file an issue describing the problem that you saw. Okay, so now in the samples view we see that blanks are always colored red and the remaining samples are given a default color. But let's go ahead and standardize colors according to the type of sample. Here, water samples. We're going to click on this paint can here to make them blue. And now I'm going to click, and, and I'm holding down the, con the command key, clicking again. If you're on Windows, it's uh, the, the control key, but I'm on a Mac. Here's orange. Click OK. And as you can see, now we have data from the orange samples, our yeast background. The purple, blue is uh, water, and then blanks are red. Okay, so now we're going to load a spectral library into Maven. The way that you can do this is you click on the library button here. And in this case, I'm going to import a new library. In Maven, you can import either CSV or MSP files with the preferred type being MSP, in particular for uh, MSMS spectral libraries. So import a new library. I'm going to navigate to the library. And here we're going to look at the positive library since this data that I'm showing was collected in positive ionization mode. Once it's loaded, we'll see that it appears. And now we have 666 entries. Close the dialog. And now under compounds, we can look at the contents of the metabolomics pause library. Now, if we click on different entries, we can see that uh, this window here updates according to the MZ of the um, precursor MZ. 
and showing the EIC or extracted ion chromatogram corresponding to this uh, in the samples that we have loaded. And we also see down here in this fragmentation widget, which is we can access through this too, this uh, here we can see what the library spectrum is. We know it's library because we see red peaks. Okay, so you can also filter the library. So in this case, let's search for the keyword tyrosine. We see there are a number of compounds that have the word tyrosine somewhere in their name. And a particular interest to us is this L-tyrosine. And so now um, this is a good time to show you a little more about this called the EIC widget. So right now we are just looking at scans. We're not trying to do any peak picking or grouping, but if we turn this button, this automatic peak group, uh, grouping button, now the uh, Maven will automatically try to identify groups in the window that we have shown. And so these circles indicate a group. And if I click on it, now I can see the MS2 scans correlated with this group down here, this MS2 consensus spectrum compared to our library spectrum. I also want to point out that there are many options surrounding how peak grouping is done. Options to show. For instance, I can show the RT range of the peak or hide it. And I can change how smoothing is done. The type of smoothing and the uh, size of the smoothing window. Up here, I can change some of the visual options. For instance, I can fill or not the uh, EICs, and I can also show the individual scans, which appears these dots. I can zoom in by dragging, by holding down uh, the left mouse key and dragging over the range. And then all the same options apply. I can also click this lock to lock this retention time range, which means that if I switch between different elements, notice that this range is always between 5.8 and 6.6. And I can click this button here just to switch to the whole range. And I'll turn off the law. And I'll zoom in again. Now, you may have noticed there's this M plus H here. And uh, this is an addict. And we can turn on which addicts we're interested in. Right now, as you can see, we have four different positive mode addicts which we can search. And so we can look, for instance, well, here's the sodiated form, or here's the protonated form. Do we see the sodiated form of the same compound? And the answer is it doesn't look like it. We also don't see the, the ammoniated form or the uh, M plus form. So let's go ahead and turn off all the addicts except for the protonated form. We do that by clicking this addicts dialog here, sort by enabled. I'm going to just uncheck everything but the protonated form, and I'll click Update. And now, in the GUI, the only addict we'll be looking for in compounds is this M plus H1. So, now that I've shown you how you can browse individual compounds, you can group on the fly. So notice when I have peak grouping, it will group throughout the window, right? So I have these three different, these are three different groups. We can actually scan an entire data set. We can do that using the peaks tool. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off uh, on the fly grouping, click the peaks tool, and we're gonna start a group, and we're going to undertake a uh, data set wide search. I'm gonna just change a few settings here. We're going to be requiring MS2 matches. Once you've set parameters appropriately, go ahead and click Find Peaks. As Maven identifies more peaks, it will tell you, it will give you some sense of how much of the data set it has scanned. And it also tell you the running total of number of peaks. While that's running, I'll tell you a bit about these options. Uh, so here we're looking at, I have this must have MS2 box checked, meaning that all the group peak groups I find must have at least one MS2 and one sample associated with them. I'm not re matching retention times. Well, it looks like that's done. So let's go ahead and I'll talk a little more a bit about this. These settings here are actually mimicking the settings I have under options. But if I change settings here, this is for this search, 
settings from the options widget are for the on the fly peak grouping. Under scoring, this is a minimum intensity threshold. Good refers to, well, essentially it's a model, it's a, it's a long story, but essentially how much of a peak it looks like, how regular the shape is, things that we've trained a model to decide what is a good peak. And this is saying we need at least three good peaks uh, for a peak group to be real. We're using the hypergeometric score, but notice you can change the scoring method. And we're setting some criteria according to what is the minimum threshold for peak. Okay, so when you see results, they look like this. You get a table called detected features. And this is essentially a list of hypotheses. I wanna point out I have the peak grouping button turned off. And as I start to net, I can then click through these to see my hits. And as I click, it shows me in the widget what it thinks the peak group is. In the MS2 widget, it shows me the library spectrum, for instance, oleic acid, and it shows me this MS2 um, consensus spectrum, which is a combination of all the MS2 scans from all the samples put together that was compared to this library spectrum to make this score assessment. And I just want to point out that we have this MS2 score shown here. And we can see that this is organized in descending order by the most highest confidence matches. And you can see many spectral matches and many and a lot of spectral similarity between the reference spectrum and the observed spectra. There's a number of options that are somewhat hidden away. You can, uh, if you right click, you'll see, for instance, we can look at more information about the scans that are used. You can also zoom in to show. And again, I'm just left clicking and dragging. You can also um, change the uh, what part of the spectrum is displayed by clicking options. Go to spectral display, and let's say I want to change, I, I only want to look at, let's say, 120 to 150. I click off auto scale, and all of a sudden, this renders 120 to 150. And there are many other options available, and I would encourage you to use right clicks to show options that are available, as well as this options uh, button right here. Now, as you look through these results, you may see there are these cases that are highlighted. And what it, when it's highlighted, what this means is that these are two different P groups, uh, in this case, glycocolic acid, was identified. So two different P groups were identified with the same compound. So this is, this is a warning that at least one of these is incorrect. So as you can see, there, it's essentially the same MZ with two different retention times. If I click back and forth, you can see the same, the currently, the circles show the currently selected peak. Now, if you would like, you can uh, organize this in a different way. You can put all the matches by compound together. If you right click, you can click cluster analysis, and you can cluster groups by compound. And if you do that, now we can see that these two are organized together in a single group. So I'll turn that off. Now, as if I'm interested in a very specific compound, I can start typing it in, in here. For instance, I can see that ornithine was detected. And there it is, that's what it looks like. I can also filter based on the MZ. So let's say I'm interested in things that have an MZ of about 288. I don't find any, okay. but I do find 112. And I can also filter by tag. So what I can do is I can select individual items and I can give them as, oh, I think this is good. And I can also give other tags, which I, I'm, I'm right clicking here and I can show these different options. And I can actually give the same item multiple tags at once. And I can click on an item, hold down shift, select, click another one, and then I can give these a tag. And then once these are tagged, if I want to show and hide certain peak groups based on the tags, I can click this button here. And let's say I want to show only my orange circles and my pink stars. I hit apply filter and all of a sudden I'm only looking at items that have that, that respect that filter. Of course, if I want to clear the filter, I can just click again, clear filter, and now I can see everything. Okay. So once you're processing a data set and you've made annotations in the form of these tags, you've made comments, you also might find things that are very interesting and you want to store these in a separate table. You can do this by, if you double click on the circle, 
you can create a bookmark. And in this case, keeping track of uh, biocytin, and because I have isotopes turned on, I also picked up some isotopes. So let's say we don't really want those. I delete my bookmark, and I'm going to add it again, and this time I'm double clicking, and this time I don't see the isotopes. If you're interested in a peak, but you'd like to update the integration for that peak, so for instance, we're looking here, and we see here's our RT range. We think this is a little wide. I can hold down the shift key and click and drag and say, I think this peak is real, but it's the, this is the true boundary. And now, now, I, now it will appear with the manually integrated uh, quant. And again, that was shift and click to draw this red line. Okay. All right, well, that gives an introduction to the GUI features available in Maven. When, you are, when you've reached a point where you would like to save your results, you can just click Save. And this will save as an m0db file, which is a type of SQLite file, which you can access programmatically if you'd like. But let's go ahead and we're going to call this Maven2 test. Hit save. I'll close Maven. And now I'm going to reopen Maven. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to reopen. We're going to navigate to that recently saved file. Maven takes a moment to reload all the data. And we have our saved bookmarks as well as our saved search. And we can look at our compounds and continue our investigation. That completes this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.